go check out binarychaos.com there's lots of interesting tools and don't forget to provide your feedback this was the last uh, tool that was published on the site as a vision vision impairment simulator and yes just realized that we're missing a lot of uh, a vision conditions um, in here so we'll probably be getting back to it sometime shortly yeah we have a neural net trainer a simple um, example you can change your training set side the number of hidden layers a noise level noise level it's not changing life it's probably can be improved but yeah it's uh, changing only when you hit that train neural net button you can see it's having trouble to converge and if you reduce the noise level it should be doing better sometimes you need to run it like multiple times because it's non-deterministic every time you get different results as opposed to a fuzzy logic system no it's converging i don't know what what was up if uh, that doesn't seem to get any lower so it's saturated at 0 0.04 so that's pretty good it can also improve the uh, increase the training size uh, uh, change the number of epochs and see what differences make but yes remember that it's uh, non-deterministic so even with the same parameters it will run differently every time so good luck with neural networks there's some examples and the description below go check it out on bionicchaos.com some article uh yes i'll mention this one but i forgot another use of uh, eeg or modality or oh, it's not quite relevant but we might have a separate uh, a blog slash tool that actually covers amplitude eeg is used quite extensively i used it before actually mostly used originally used in neo neonatal uh, recordings so, um, because the number of electrodes uh, is uh, limited but yes you can uh, use it uh, for adult adult recording recordings as well so i might leave that the uh, blog as is and uh, we'll start a new one mm, probably not today uh, what else we've got so we got a bunch of old tools here go check out the a uh, pupil detection eye detection i don't know what's up with my hair but the uh, eye detection actually works so maybe no darkness threshold yeah you need to adjust your darkness threshold because it will be specific on the eye and this works better the default is gonna offset and yeah, you need to select your yeah one eye is working okay that one is not so that's interesting pretty sure that's not the darkest point there's something wrong looks like an error it meant to find the, the darkest point in the region of interest just seem to be doing it on yeah the threshold is important so you need to adjust the threshold for it to actually work so probably suggest putting this this eyes always offset anyway play around with it let me know what you think uh, and how would you improve it yeah the biggest tool of all is this bot that plays an ecg detection game so we covered this extensively go watch previous videos uh, let me know what scores what score you reached up to when uh, just doing it yourself or when using the bot as the so instead of a competition you can turn it into a collaboration you meant to click on abnormal ecg button so that's normal i'm not clicking on it i'm getting the extra points i missed actually this one no yep no, it keeps scrolling it's getting faster every 50 points so this was obviously abnormal the bot is doing well as well it's another normal i'm not clicking on so it's a correct rejection 
this is a hint because it's an abnormal and I did click on it. The bot did the same. So currently we have the same score. The previous one was missing a downward spike after the R wave, same as here. So, so far so good, but now it's getting faster. And the bot will eventually be kicking my bottom. Yeah, interestingly, the bot is making decision much uh, faster because it, yeah, clicks. Well, it doesn't click, but you know what I mean? It, uh, as soon as the waveform is uh, presented to the robot, it's making the decision, decision straight away. And I have to, my score is lagging behind because I have to actually click on the screen. So that takes some time for a human, not for a robot. Once it becomes faster, well, I'm kind of getting distracted already because I had enough. I'm going to have my coffee, but the bot doesn't need any breaks. Eh, it made, I'm actually leading now because the robot made the miss and a second miss. I was like, what? I have to tune up that um, algorithm. It's a fuzzy logic. It's actually telling you what it does. It did a false alarm as well. That's really odd. Something was up. And I made the false alarm as well. Cause essentially false alarm is when I click on a normal ECG waveform. I wasn't paying attention to that one. It's just guessed. I think I guessed incorrectly. And I missed one. Missed the one of normal one that I didn't click on. It's becoming faster. We have about the same score as with the robot still able to so i'm not looking at the, the bot so currently i'm not collaborating i'm just uh, playing against the robot i'm just looking at the waveform obviously i can also be like in a collaboration mode if i actually look at the processing of the oops okay now it's becoming crazy fast i just have to look oh this one some of them are harder, some of them are easier. Yeah, okay, now I'm not even able to... Yeah, I probably need to move my mouse to the most left of the screen. I'm surprised I'm still able to keep up with the robot, because the robot did some mistakes as well. I don't know if you can hear me pounding the mouse or not, probably not. Some noise cancelling with the microphone. Oops, shouldn't have pressed that. Yeah, so now it's too fast. I'm already tired. The bot keeps going strong. I don't even know at what the FPS uh, frames per second I'm recording this. And it might be not moving smoothly on the in the video. Oops. Ah, oh, that was a false alarm and misses. I can't keep up. I'm like, I need a rest. Like my eyes need a rest, but the bot will keep going. It's currently still uh, doing false alarms and uh, misses. That's because the uh, noise level is kind of, well, it's not zero. It's uh, in the middle of that scale. So if I put it higher, it will start making more mistakes. But then the human might be making more mistakes as well. Yeah, so that's with more noise. This is less noise. With less noise, it should... Yeah, it's obviously easier for me. I can actually do some more. But uh, in this condition, the bot will not be making any more false alarms or misses. Then with increased noise, yeah. False alarm, false alarm, false alarm. Essentially labeling everything as um, abnormal, which is obviously not good. That's what that uh, noise level um, slider is for. It's uh, just uh, designed to show you that uh, machine learning algorithms make mistakes when the signal is noisy. That's exactly what it does. The fuzzy logic algorithm, the machine learning, is looking at positive peaks, negative peaks, raw amplitude, our peak amplitude, so the amplitude of that. Uh, major peak in the ECG and intervals between P wave, R peak, R peak and T wave. And it has a threshold for each one. So it's a deterministic system. It will give you the same result every time. 
so it's uh, giving you an abnormality score out of this one two three four five six uh, parameters fairly straightforward and uh, yeah so this is essentially showing how oh yeah if we collaborate with the bot and can be just looking at that uh, abnormality score if it's very high it uh, means the machine is uh, confident if it's uh, essentially below 0.5 it means it labels uh, normal. If it's above 0.5, it's labeling abnormal. And uh, the level of that abnormality score, how close it is to zero or one will determine how confident the robot is. So I can use that and we can make uh, decisions together. Yeah, you could see the 0.51, obviously it's sitting on the you know, on the threshold there, so it's like, it's essentially the robot saying, I'm not quite sure. So, if human and robot working together, uh, that's the one you should be paying more attention to. And yeah, that's what the score is doing. Uh, the bot already got like three times a better performance than myself. It's uh, fairly straightforward. There's only one uh, normal ECG wave and uh, four or five abnormal type waveforms. Uh, so it shouldn't be complicated. Anyone should be able to to do this uh, task. Hey, uh, what else we've got? So we've got something um, yeah, this stuff. Yeah, got annoying um, uh, making annoying sounds. By the way, I do split the video later. If anything interesting happened, I will be generating standalone uh, videos after out of this live stream to remember to do some sort of, uh, you know, click or something to be able then in the video editing to um, remove uh, that uh, segment. Like if I'm doing blah 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 no, it needs to be something like you know like that in the movies. The action, action, no action. Uh, this one is the <laughs> yes, currently it's just a silly game. But potentially could um, review time series data that way instead of the traditional scrolling on the screen. Could be just looking in one spot instead of I don't know. Um and uh, this could be the number of particles could be the number of channels um normally whatever 20 something in eeg and the speed could be your frequency you could also do a uh, size changes of each uh, particle that will uh, uh, simulate amplitude of the signal so it goes and yeah, the problem with this one, they bounce all over the place. Could be going just uh, clockwise. Uh, for reviewing EG. And then if you have a seizure or something, it will go crazy like this. Let me know what you think and how would you turn it into something more useful. And yeah, go check out the website.